What's up everybody, Overclock here. Today we're going to be setting up the Elgato Stream Deck. I'm going to show you everything you need to know in order to integrate this piece of gear seamlessly into your live stream setup. I'll be going over some quick tips and tricks to showcase the best features of this device, and near the end of the video, I'll give you my honest thoughts about it. First off, what is the Elgato Stream Deck? Well, it's a keypad macro tool that allows you to assign images, text, or GIFs to buttons, which you can then press to utilize or program a multitude of features and actions you wouldn't normally be able to execute. For example, if you're mid-game and don't want to alt-tab out of your game, you can simply press a pre-programmed button on your stream deck to switch scenes. You can also do things like mute and unmute Discord while remaining in-game. You can even send out a tweet to tell people you're live and ask them to drop by the stream all with the push of a button. Basically, it makes your life as a streamer a lot easier. To kick things off, we need to download the latest Stream Deck software by going to downloads at elgato.com, link in the video description. There we can select our product and operating system for download. Once downloaded and installed, we can see our Stream Deck in the software along with a series of open keys and a list of commands to perform using other integrations. One thing to note, if you plug in your Stream Deck and it doesn't appear in your software, or you only see the Elgato logo lit up, then you need to try a different USB port. I had this issue when I plugged my Stream Deck into my monitor. As soon as I plugged it directly into my PC, everything worked fine. The first thing we'll want to do is link the necessary accounts to our Stream Deck software. We can do this by clicking the gear icon, going to Accounts, and then logging in and granting access to any of the platforms we're interested in. Personally, I'm linked to Twitter, Twitch, Streamlabs, and YouTube. If we switch over to the General tab, we can see some basic settings such as sleep time, brightness, we can even set a screensaver, although at the time of this video, it only accepts images. If we switch to Profiles, we can essentially see the different screens we can switch between. We can add, remove, rename, and even create a backup of all our profiles. This can definitely come in handy as the initial setup time can be quite lengthy, especially if you have more advanced actions. I'm going to create a new profile for demonstrative purposes and then walk through some of the more common integration actions. So I'm just going to click this plus icon. As we can see, a new profile, Profile 2, has been added. And I'm just going to hop over here and then select it. And as we can see, we have an empty profile. The first integration on the list that I make use of is the soundboard integration. Basically, it allows us to select a play audio action and select a sound effect or movie quote and so on that we could play during our stream when something happens such as when we win lose get a kill get killed and so on so you can imagine that that just generally creates a little bit more engagement and makes things a little bit more interesting for the viewers so let's test out this sound Now, if you select a key and then right click on the icon, you can choose set from file, which will set it to an image or a GIF, or you can choose create new icon. This opens up the Elgato stream key creator, which allows you to choose a basic set of icons and backgrounds to create your own stream keys. You can also set the key text as well as show and hide it, in addition to altering its font, size, and position. Next is the stream deck integration. As you can probably guess, it's the most commonly used integration as it's responsible for controlling and navigating your stream deck. The first action we see under this integration is the Create Folder action. It allows us to create a collection of actions under a single button, saving us space on our profile. When we click into our folder, we can see that we have a new screen to assign multiple new keys. There's also a preset key to take us back to our parent screen. Folders can be nested, but that will require additional navigation to get back to your main profile. Leading into the Switch Profile action, which allows you to jump to any other screen. You can create a switch profile action to act as a home, forward, or back button. This allows you to create an endless stream of macro keys for your use on the fly. Next is multi-action, a very powerful command that lets you combine multiple integration actions into a single click. Essentially, you can chain commands. This is where the macro element of the stream deck really comes into play. If we have a long list of actions that need to be taken every time we prepare our stream, we can chain a bunch of different commands together, adding delays between if necessary, so we can click one button while our stream deck does the rest. For example, if before going live we want to start Discord, Streamlabs, open up Twitch dashboard in a web browser, and so on, we can chain all those commands together into a single multi-action. Multi-actions are also very useful when it comes to getting fancy with your stream. You can add a lot of production value by enabling and disabling sources, adding delays, and switching scenes. 
I'll leave it to your imagination as to some of the things that might be done, but trust me, there are a lot of opportunities to create some really cool elements on stream. Jumping out of multi-action, we can see multi-action switch, which is basically a multi-action toggle, where one button click is one multi-action, and the second button click is a different multi-action. Random action is just as it sounds like. You can have multiple actions added to a random action key, where one is executed every time the key is pressed. This can be particularly useful for sending tweets. Instead of having one go live tweet, we can have a collection of tweets in a random action. I have random action tweet keys for specific games I play and just in general for when I go live. It's a decent amount of prep work, but gives lots of flexibility to reach an audience and send out multiple go live tweets during a single stream. Looking at the Streamlabs OBS integration, we can see Scene, Mixer Audio, Record, Stream, and Source Actions. Scene to transition to a new scene, Mixer Audio to toggle mute on and off for a particular source, Record and Stream to start and stop recording and streaming, and Source to toggle a source on and off. But at this point, I'm sure you get the gist of things. Under System, we can see Website, Open, and Multimedia. Website allows you to open a certain web page. Open lets you run a program. This can be a game or any type of software. And multimedia lets you control your audio. This can be play pause, previous next, and volume up or down. The Twitter integration is pretty straightforward. You can send out a tweet with your linked account with the option of adding an attachment. The Streamlabs integration lets you test alerts, pause alerts, and so on. Some convenient Twitch chat commands include follower chat, emote chat, switching between the two, creating clips on the fly. Underneath custom is toggle mute and deafen for Discord. These actions aren't available by default and require additional setup, which I may cover in a future tutorial. If you guys are interested, just let me know in the comments section below. Lastly, you can go to more actions to download third-party actions to further enhance your workflow. There are a bunch of different actions available, and if you have the technical skills, you can actually create your own, which is pretty cool. So the options with a Stream Deck seem pretty much endless. I wasn't fully sure what to expect from my first impressions in my unboxing video, all the way to having finished the complete setup of the Stream Deck, but I have to say, it went pretty smooth, and it's a really nice addition to my stream. It's easy to set up, and you quickly forget that you never had one. It definitely adds a production element. It feels like someone is there helping you run your stream, which is super valuable. However, I wish there were more stream key templates available. I feel like Elgato should consider making a library out of the box so you don't have to spend a ton of time working on art to get a decent looking macro pad. Maybe in the future. Also, it's important to note that even though you're getting a lot of value, you are paying for it, and it doesn't come cheap, especially for something that is a nice to have. You can run a stream just fine without one, so unless you want to do something new and creative, maybe on the edge, you may want to save your money. But if it's something you've wanted for a while and you see the value, I say go ahead and get one. Just be sure it's worth it to you. I think that pretty much covers everything. I hope you learned something new, got a good insight into the product, and if you already have one, hopefully it makes your stream struggles easier. As always, be sure to like and subscribe, it really makes a difference. Follow me on Twitch, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one.